Now there's a wealth of lessons here on YouTube about how to learn the notes on the fretboard. Often presented with some secret way, some secret method, that missing piece of the jigsaw that you've been missing all along. Whilst I'm sure many of those videos have useful tricks and tips, I think the thing that's often missing is really the fact that we all learn in different ways and to really work at this and crack this, you need to work at a way that works for you. So rather than promising some magical way which will unravel the neck for you in a five minute video, I'm gonna go through this logically and thoroughly so that this sticks for you. Now we all learn in different ways. The pedagogical approach to this would be, you know, thinking about the different ways in which we learn, which can be broken down into three categories, visual, auditory, and kinesthetic. I think most people identify that they learn from a mixture of those, maybe favoring one of the three though. So rather than blindly following someone's secret method, why not first reflect upon the way you learn and then approach learning the fretboard with that method so you can get there quicker and with less frustration. And that's how we're gonna tackle this problem in today's lesson. Everything you see on the screen is available as a PDF link in the description. In the description, you'll also find a link to my Patreon page. Now on the second tier, there's a fretboard knowledge lesson each month and there are supplementary materials over there uh, based on today's lesson to help you work at this based on the way that you learn. Now, one of the most important skills of a teacher is to ascertain the way that an individual student likes to learn and then tailor their approach to that. But away from that context, just as a, a guitar player practicing at home, we should know that too, because there's some practice methods which if we blindly follow someone else's practice methods, they might not work for us because it might not suit the way we learn. Now, I'm very much a visual learner. If I'm at a rehearsal and another member of the band suggests some odd rhythm, then I need to see that written down. I need to be able to visualize it. Once I can do that, it's fine. But until then, I'm sort of struggling with it because just hearing someone describe it, it doesn't work for me. Now I've included in the description a link to a learning questionnaire, uh, which I encourage you to do. This gives you an idea as to whether you learn best from visual, auditory or kinesthetic methods. So why not try doing that? Now to approach learning the fretboard, I'm gonna first start without the guitar. Personally, I think one of the issues often people have, there's so many frets, you know, so many possibilities of where notes are. It can feel quite overwhelming. So let's ditch the guitar for now. If you don't know the musical alphabet inside out, that's definitely the first place to start. Now the musical alphabet can be divided into two camps and the piano visually does this so much better than the guitar. We have the natural notes, A, B, C, D, E, F, G. And then we have the sharps and flats. So we have A sharp or B flat, we have C sharp or D flat, D sharp or E flat, F sharp or G flat, G sharp or A flat. Now, if you're the resident know-it-all in the viewership, uh, you'll be saying, what about C flat? What about F flat? What about B sharp and E sharp? Yes, of course, they are valid notes, but I don't think we need to complicate things yet with those. Those are things I would tackle with learning the major scale in every key. We then put that into order. So let's start from A, because that makes most logical sense. And it would go as follows. A, A sharp or B flat. B, C, C sharp or D flat, D, D sharp or E flat, E, F, F sharp or G flat, G, G sharp or A flat, and then we're back to A. And a couple of obvious things to point out there, there's no sharps between B and C and between E and F. And sometimes I found teaching that some people need like a silly thing to remember that, like B and C, I don't know, first thing that comes to head, British Columbia, between E and F, epic fail, but you could put any words to those. So now let's think about how you learn the musical alphabet based on whether you're a visual, auditory, or kinesthetic learner. So for the visual learner, this is obviously all about how the information is presented. And if it was just done speaking it aloud, it might be difficult. So the piano for me does this best. Look at it here, with the white notes being the natural notes and the black notes being our sharps and flats. But it could simply be a use of color to differentiate between the natural notes and the sharps and flats, like this. For the auditory learner, this could simply be reading it aloud, but you could do a few fun things with this. A couple things. You could see if you can say it in a certain amount of time. So you see if you can say the musical alphabet with the sharps and flats, or just with sharps and just with flats, and see how quickly you can do it and see if you can beat that time. Now on my Patreon page, there's a guided practice MP3 for this for you to work with. If you learn best by doing so, you're a kinesthetic learner, then we need to get you actively doing something. Just looking at a sheet of paper with it on or just saying it or hearing it, 
isn't going to cut it. So we need to do something physical. So a couple things I would suggest, you could write this out or you could create something like I put on the screen for the visual learner. There is also a fun little activity where I'd suggest you cut out all the different notes, just jumble them up and then have to put them in order. So that would be a few suggestions on a visual, auditory and kinesthetic way to approach learning just the musical alphabet. And that's our solid foundation from which we can properly learn the fretboard. And I think one of the difficulties of learning the fretboard is that you might say learn the musical alphabet from A, but we've got to know it inside out and be able to jump in at any point and know where we are. So it's about knowing the sequence inside out. And if we think about the demands that music plays on us, if you're on a note, the next note you play is either going to be the same note or you're going to make a jump to a high note or to a low note. So we need to be able to move within the sequence and know it, you know, say from A, from C, from D and be able to jump around within it. Because say if we just did it from A to A and played all those notes in between, we'd be playing what's called the chromatic scale. And whilst that is a thing to know, it's not often, doesn't often come up that way in music. So knowing the sequence backwards, that would be A, then G sharp or A flat, then G and so on. As you can probably already tell, it's not as easy going backwards. Every, and when, I always think that's the case with most things musically. So if you're the visual learner, I would have it written out in that color form that we had earlier, but in reverse. So like this, being able to picture that I think is very helpful. For the auditory learner, being able to say it backwards or hearing it backwards. Again, there's a practice MP3 for this on Patreon, but you know, essentially it's about being able to go A, then G sharp or A flat, G, F sharp or G flat, F, E, E flat, D sharp, and so on until we reach back to A. For the kinesthetic learner, if you learn by doing, you could take my handout where you can cut out all the different notes and then put it in reverse order. With exercise one, essentially we're still in the same order. We're starting from A, yes, we're going backwards. Now, exercise two, what I'd like you to do is be able to know the other chromatic scales. So if we started our musical alphabet from C and then got to the next C, we'd be playing the same sequence, but we'd start on C. So it would go, so it goes C, and let's just use sharps for this example, C, C sharp, D, D sharp, E, F, F sharp, G, G sharp, A, A sharp, B, back to C. And again, you could do it backwards as well. That's the same sequence we had from A to A, but it's just starting from C and finishing on the next C. And then obviously, could you start from any note? Could you start that chromatic scale from an F sharp, from an E flat, from an E? You know, try it. Getting things like this to stick and be able to access that information at different points is the key to really securely knowing this. And the next step is naturally to apply this to the guitar. Now, most approaches start like this, and I think that's possibly why some people have difficulty because they don't know that first stage, the musical alphabet, flawlessly first. Now, how do we translate this to the guitar? We've got six strings. Which one should we learn first, or should we just learn individual notes? Personally, I like applying that continuous sequence to one string first, then branching out to others. The string that makes most sense to start with is the A string. It's, after all, at the start of our musical alphabet. So if we start on the A string, here's the diagram on the screen. Open string would obviously be A, and we're going to do this in sharps, by the way. Fret 1 would be A sharp, fret 2 would be B, and fret 3 is C, and then carrying on C sharp, fret 5 is D, 6 is D sharp, 7 is E, F is fret 8, fret 9 is F sharp, fret 10 is G, fret 11 is G sharp, and then the double dots on the guitar make sense here because we get back to A for the octave of the open string. We could have also done that in flats and that would have looked like this. Now what string makes sense to tackle next? I think the E because it's the closest string to us when we're playing and if you take care of E and you've already got A, you will actually have 50% of the strings sorted because you've got two E strings and then we've got the A string just leaving us D, G, B to worry about. So the E string, let's do this in sharps again. So the low E this is, open E, then fret 1 would be F, fret 2 would be F sharp, fret 3 would be G, fret 4 G sharp, fret 5 A, fret 6 A sharp, 7 B, 
8 is C, 9 is C sharp, 10 is D, and 11 is D sharp, fret 12 is E. That would then continue after there. And what I mean by that is on both of those two strings, A and E, we got to fret 12 and we reached back to where we started, to A again and to E again. If we then kept going, let's say on the E string, fret 13 after the E at fret 12 would be an F. Fret 14 would be F sharp, fret 15 would be G, and so on. Now you're then obviously left with D, G, and B. I'm not going to do all this for you because I think actively doing things will make the biggest difference to retaining and remembering this. But you've got the D string, the G string, and the B string. It follows exactly the same process. Uh, think of it, you can either think of it in sharps and flats at the same time, like D, D sharp, or E flat, or do it in sharps first, so D, D sharp, E, or do it in flats, D, E flat, E up to you, however you feel works best for you. Now going back to learning style, for the visual learner, those diagrams that I presented might be the thing you need. For the auditory learner, it might be maybe playing the string, playing all the notes on one string, and saying them as you play them. Alternatively, you could say them, say pick the D string, try and say it from, and a picture the fretboard at the same time. So you, you, know, you picture the open string, then you visualize fret one being D sharp and, and so on. For those that learn best by doing, it might be that you write it out for yourself or that you play it and say it, you know, you mix a few of those things together that I've just suggested. Now so far we've just been living with the chromatic scale to look at this and whilst that's very helpful I think just to get the sequence secure, obviously it's not a scale which is typically used to create melodies with. So why not try some other mu musical ingredients still sticking on one string, so say like if I said right, a C major arpeggio uses the following notes, C, E, G. How would you find that on the E string? Where would it be? Where would it be on the A string? and that's going to have to make you think. Other little things to do is you can just pick a note, say if we pick the note A, where can you find it on the guitar? Or do this, pick a string and a fret at random, fret 11 on the D string say, and try and figure it out. And that might be you have to record, you know, for some of you that you might picture it in your head, some of you might need to play it, some of you might need to talk through the notes. Now the interesting thing would be, how do you work out fret 11 on the D string? Do you have to work it out from the open string? Or can you be smarter and if you know what fret 12 is, you can just work your way back by one fret. So far working on one string has just been to really, as I say, get secure knowledge of the sequence of the musical alphabet. What if we started to think vertically? A great place to start this is at fret 5 on the E string and do what's called the relative tuning of the guitar. So fret 5 on the A string, sorry, E string is the note A. You can play that to tune the next string, which is A. If you then played fret 5 on the A string, that note's a D. You can play that to check the next strings in tune. If you then played fret 5 on the D string, that would be a G. Again, you can play it against the G string to check tuning. The next one though, the note B, you go to fret 4 on the G string. And the last one, you go to fret 5 on the B string for an E. And that's called relative tuning. You'd have heard of people doing it like this. just some keynotes to know that people use for tuning the guitar. We could also take our chromatic scale and maybe try and play vertically. Say if I took a C chromatic scale and, and tried something like this. Now a really common issue to have when trying to get to the point of remembering all of the fretboard and knowing it like that is incomplete knowledge and you might know one string or you might know bits of the neck better than others. Now one way you can get past this problem is or solve this problem in the moment is using what I call octave piggyback. So octave piggyback is where you use octave shapes on the guitar from one string you know well to another string to find out that note. How it works is there's the following basic octave shapes on the guitar. Say if we played G at fret 3 on the E string the octave of that on the D string would be at fret 5, and notice that shape. If I moved up a tone to an A, it would be the same. So if I know that fret 5 on the E string is an A, then using that octave shape, I can know that fret 7 on the D string is also an A. If we move a string in, let's go to fret 3 again. So fret 3 on the A string is a C. If we then skip a string and go two frets up, we have fret 5 on the G string. That is also a C. Then again, that shape would move up and down the fretboard. So if you knew the A string well, say if you knew fret 7 on the A string was an E, you'd then know that fret 9 on the G string is an E. 
The shapes for the next two pairs of strings does change slightly. So if you played fret two on the D string, you then have to use your little finger to play fret five on the B string for another E. Move it up a fret, you've got two Fs. Um, moving to the G string and the E string, if you played fret two on the G, it would be an A, giving you fret five on the E string being an A. So that's a very quick, useful way, but it does rely upon you knowing the first string well. Ultimately, to really conquer this problem of learning the neck, I think what I suggested earlier is in terms of working out what methods are going to work best for you is important. But I think it ultimately comes down to having good habits and maintaining those habits. And I've got a few suggestions for you. And the first big habit to really help you apply this knowledge, this learning of the notes on the fretboard, is not to allow yourself to think in numbers, fret numbers or tab numbers, and to think in notes all the time. Even if it slows you down to begin with, if you just keep at it, you keep doing it. It's a bit like learning to read music. It's tricky at first. The more you do it, a bit each day, it just becomes easier and easier to the point when then suddenly you realise you can read music. My second habit is that you don't need a guitar to practice this. You can think about this in the shower. You can talk yourself through the notes on the fretboard. You can do as I say, like, right, fret 10 B string, what is it? And see how quickly you can work it out. You might have to picture the fretboard. You might have a notepad where you draw fretboard diagrams or you write the notes out on. Just think you can use your time very creatively. You don't need a guitar to practice this, though I find kind of visualizing it or maybe drawing it helpful. Third habit is the frequency at which you work this. Work at this for five or 10 minutes a day. This will get easier and you'll, you'll pick it up more quickly and you'll remember it more readily. If you're just doing it like once a week, oh, I'll do a bit of notes. No, it, you just gotta work at it every day if you can. And every time you pick up the guitar, it's a thinking notes and things will become much easier. Finally, all the additional support materials to help you conquer this problem, they're available on the second tier of my Patreon page, the accompanist tier. So if that's something you're interested in, please check it out. As ever, if you've got any questions, you leave them below and I'll do my best to get back to you. Thank you for tuning in. As ever, until next time, you take care.